Hey, <clears throat> what's up, Peach? I know I didn't get a chance to talk to you yesterday. I was in no place to do any conversation, conversing with anyone, to be honest with you. I was, uh, and I still am, I, I, I was just broken and crushed. I was hurt. I was hurt. And, and in full confession, I was, uh, you know, a game Saturday, Miami game Saturday. I went to that game. I was already going through something personally. So, you know, your, your heart, my heart was hurting already from what I was dealing with personally. And I went to that game <clears throat> in my personal life. I went to that game to, to, I was looking for those guys to lift me up. Let's win this game here at Georgia Tech, man. Raise, lift everybody up. You know, and I told you guys I was worried about that game because, like I talked about, when you have such success, everybody pats you on the back and tell you how great you are, and then you have a tendency to light up, to let up a little bit, and that's usually the crack in the dam that starts the whole flood. But, but the more and more I think about it, and and now that the season has changed, the the the, the playoff system has changed. You know, may, may, maybe this setback, maybe a little setback, sometimes becomes a good set up, because the reality is, you know, the object now is not to finish undefeated. The object is to finish playing your best football since you have now a playoff system. You know, it used to be you got to finish undefeated to get an opportunity to win a championship. But now, since that decision is going to be made on the field about who's the best and not sitting in some office by a bunch of guys who just say, I take this team over that team, that team, then it's back to being a meritocracy, which simply means you get what you earn. And, and and that's what you want. So now, since you get what you earn, what you want to do is earn your best ball towards the end of the year. And Miami has been going along pretty good, playing and feeling confident about the comeback, being able to come back. But you can't do that every week. And I was worried about this game because I knew, and I didn't want to speak it into the reality, but... The reality was, I was emotionally drained. I know those kids had to be emotionally drained. I, 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 was, I, I was trying to raise myself up and raise them up. I saw after the game, when we were walking in the locker room, I, I, I saw the pain on Cam's face. I saw the pain in those guys' face. And... And though I was hurting, I, I said to myself, wait a minute, this may be good. This is the refocus. This is the redirecting. You know what I mean? And no matter how much you try to tell yourself, stay sharp, stay sharp. I'm telling you, I told you guys, Coach Johnson, Johnson used to say this all the time. Coach Johnson would say it over and over and over again. And we still lost the game. And I was like, how could this happen? We, 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 we talked about it. We, we worked hard this week, and it still happened. It's just sometimes you were, you're emotionally drained, and I think they were emotionally drained. I needed them to get just, just I, I was trying to say, four quarters, last quarter, last quarter, one quarter, and then you get a break. But you don't want to say you get a break while you're playing the game because then the mind – actually takes a break and now you can't do that in the midst of a game. So I was I'm like, one more quarter, one more quarter. Can we find one more quarter just to win that game when we were that close? But I think they just the, 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 the team was emotionally spent. If that game was at home, then the home crowd can raise you up to complete that comeback. Because I saw those guys, man, late in that game they started coming alive and firing it up. And, and But it was a little too late. Too little, too late this time. And I just, man, I'm telling y'all, man, that hurts.
damn, I feel so bad for my boys, you know? I really do. I was feeling bad, I told you already, but I, I, well, pain is a funny thing. It's just a funny thing. I got right on the plane and came back. You know, there was no need to stay there. I told you I'm a bad loser. I don't want to be walking around. Even when I was walking out the game, I had to deal with people telling me, Michael, Michael, I told y'all, I told y'all, go with what? I was like, oh my God. I guess we've been doing this to people, so I got to take this now. But yeah, that, it, I, I was hurt. I was hurt. I'm going to church right now to try to deal with my pain because the football game couldn't fix it. If football can't fix it, go to my faith. My football, in my faith, usually that takes care of the pain. But if faith of my football can't do it, then you go to the food. I just eat myself. And then you go, all right, then lay down and say, oh, what did I do? I'm just trying to eat my misery away. You know, so, so I'm going to God this morning and tell him to lift this burden from upon thee. That's me. So I can try to find some peace. Here's what I'm worried about. My emotions are not in a good place right now. And that gummit, I said to myself, because I try to measure this thing with Miami, Colorado, and then Dallas. And Miami came up short. Colorado did win. And now, I, I, I never had it this way this year. You know, I've had Miami win and Colorado lose and then Dallas lose. I had Miami and Colorado win and of course Dallas lose. But this time, it was something funny when I was leaving Atlanta because I left abruptly after the game. I was like, let's go. Let's get out of here. Let's go. When I was leaving, I saw T11 was where my flight was leaving. As I was walking to Dallas, to my flight to Dallas, T12 was the Philadelphia, was a flight to Philadelphia. I said, oh no, what's going on here? T12 is Philadelphia, T11 was Dallas took a video of it because it was just enough to make my crazy butt start thinking, wait a minute, Cooper Rush is playing. He started. Dallas, is, Dallas averaged about 21 points a game. Philly averages 24 points a game. I told you guys, the backup quarterback comes in, one of the receivers rides up because he's been working out with someone. Who is that someone for the Dallas Cowboys that will rise up? You see, who will rise up? And if Cooper Rush can find five more points, six more points, two more field goals, with Michael Parsons returning and their whole Philly to 24 points they average, Dallas can end up winning this game. And I thought to myself, T12, T11, this must be something here. God, you're trying to tell me something. You know I'm walking around here in pain in this airport right now. I got Philadelphia, the team they play Sunday, right next to Dallas. What are you trying to tell me? And you know what I said? This is the kind of season it's been. Cooper Rush goes in here and finds a way to beat the Dallas Cowboys today. Then everybody started saying, is it time for Dallas to move on from Dak Prescott? And here we come with that flood. You see what I'm saying? Either way, Today is going to be a day. If Dallas win, if Dallas loses, oh God, now I got to deal with a loss, loss. 
Miami and Dallas. If Dallas somehow finds a way to win this game because Cooper Rush made a few more plays and A.J. Brown ain't totally healthy and Michael Parson comes back, I don't know. I'm trying to give myself some hope before I go pray. I'll give myself some hope so I, before I go pray for a victory. Because, yeah, I'm petty like that. You better believe it. I'm asking God for a victory. I'm going to say to him, haven't I dealt with enough pain already this week? I was already hurting greatly when I went to the Miami game. Then that didn't go out right. And now I'm going to pray to you and go watch the Cowboys play. I mean, just maybe God feels like he always says, I won't put more on you than you can bear. Well, God, I can't bear another cowboy loss today. Don't put that on me, please. Please, please.